out. To dig a little bit deeper, we are going to now go from looking at being human, how digital is humanizing, to looking at some strategies for next gen for brands and retail. We've got an awesome panel that is sponsored by Passage Protocol. They're the ones that are doing the NFT drop as well. They're a company building industry-leading consumer engagement and membership management tools that enable brands and enterprises to extend into Web3 with ease. Our moderator is Maral Eric. She's the co-founder of Passage Protocol, and she and her team build Web3 consumer engagement and membership management infrastructure and tools for brands and crypto-native products. Our panelists are Devin Nagy, who's a director for emerging technology at Diageo. He oversees Diageo North America's digital innovation and emerging technology group tasked with getting ahead of digital disruption in the drinks industry. I don't know how I'm going to drink a margarita virtually, but I would like to learn how to do that. <laughs> and then we have G Money, the CEO of 9DCC and Admit One. He's a renowned NFT cultural thought leader and educator, and he's the founder of 9DCC, the first crypto native fashion luxury house to exist on the blockchain. So welcome this panel. Thank you so much for that awesome introduction. How are y'all doing today? Woo! All right, you guys are the early birds, the overachievers. I love to see it. Um, all right, thanks everyone for coming. Before we dive into our panel for today, I kind of wanted to just get a feel for who is in the room. So by a show of hands, how many of you would say that you are actively involved in the Web3 space? How many of you would say you are just starting out on your Web3 journey? Okay, how many of you have a crypto wallet? Okay, that's pretty good. And how many of you have an NFT? Pretty good. All right, well, wherever you are on your Web3 journey, whether you are just starting or you don't even know what the heck an NFT is, you are in the right place. And A, we have an awesome panel for you today. And B, before you leave, make sure you pick up a D2 membership NFT. In the networking area, you'll see QR codes everywhere. Um, that'll get you access to perks and rewards and lots of good stuff at this conference and future D2 conferences to come. So with that being said, hi, everyone. My name is Maral Eric. I am a co-founder of Passage Protocol. We build Web3 membership and consumer engagement infrastructure. We are powering the D2 NFT Pass, and I have the unique privilege of working with leading global brands and Web3 communities. And with that being said, I would love to pass over the mic for our renowned panelists who are experts in bringing global brands and Web3 communities into Web3. Um, <laughs> so I'll pass it over and let you guys intro yourselves. Sure. Hey, everybody. Um, Glad to be here. My name is Devin Nagy. I'm the director of emerging technology for Diageo North America. Um, so really what that means is I look after the digital future of our brands. Uh, for those that don't know Diageo, we are a global leader in beverage alcohol. So we have a big portfolio of spirits brands, Johnny Walker, Casamigos, Don Julio, Bullet Bourbon, the list goes on. Um, it's, uh, we, we've, we're a company that's been around for a long time. Uh, Johnny Walker is a 200 plus year old brand. So this is a new space for us, and we've, uh, we've done a lot in the last year and a half, and there's a lot of learning, learning for us to come as well. Hi, I'm G Money, uh, founder of 90CC and Admit One, uh, well known for purchasing a CryptoPunk uh, back in 2021. Uh, did a collaboration with Adidas on their first NFT drop back in, uh, at the end of that year. Awesome. Well, thanks guys for the intros. And now let's get into our discussion on Web3 and how brands like yours are using it to innovate. Um, okay. So, G, I want to start with you. So, Vogue Business has called your fashion brand 90CC a crypto native luxury house and lifestyle platform. So, I want to dive a bit into what this actually means. So, to start, I was wondering if you could paint a picture for us like what exactly does it mean to incorporate NFT and NFC technology into your product? What does the product experience look like? And then I'm curious to know what has the incorporation of this technology enabled your community and your consumers to do that perhaps consumers of legacy brands are not able to do? All right, uh, that's, that's a lot to dive in there. Okay, so uh, basically when I started the brand, there were three things that I wanted to solve for. First is I wanted to create an aesthetic that I would want to wear so that, you know, it's, I, 
I am well known for my crypto punk online, but there's no way for me to natively signal that in the real world. And there was there there was no overlap between a high quality main product and something that could signal that I'm in crypto. And that's really what I wanted to solve for first and foremost. Secondly, once I get the product out in the wild, um, as a consumer of somebody that you know spends money on whether it's uh, luxury watches, handbags, sneakers, I want to know how many of them exist, right? And I think that we've seen a huge move towards that in the consumer base over the last you know decade plus. And what better use of decentralized technology than having that opportunity to do that? So that was the second thing. And the third thing, which I have found to be the most entertaining and most interesting, was once you get that product out in the wild, how do you then community build and really gamify that experience so that you get that brand affinity with the consumer base and with your community members? And what I mean by that is we have uh, NFCs, NFC tags, that are attached to NFTs on every single one of our products. And those, NFT, those NFC tags can actually distribute NFTs, which are digital collectibles, so that you could go up to it and you can collect an NFT for free from that shirt. And we've been able to gamify that experience of having people connect and meet in real life and then bring those connections back home when they go home in the community, right? And creating that social layers, that social graph that generally doesn't exist today and allowing and empowering that community member to then go do something cool with it, right? Something we were talking about backstage was what does it look like, you know, and we have that flow already where I'm wearing a 90cc shirt. If somebody comes up to me, he's like, hey, I like that shirt, right? Usually, a lot of times people will be like, all right, I'm going to go home and I'm going to buy it. A lot of times we forget. But how cool would it be if you could just say, I like that shirt. You can scan the shirt right then and there, and you can buy a shirt off of that shirt. And as the brand, I know who was the micro-influencer that convinced somebody to buy that shirt, right? And that becomes one, super valuable to the brand, super valuable to the, the ecosystem participant of, you know, that they, how do you elevate then that person within the community to empower them to be a brand ambassador even more? And, and that's really just scratching the surface. I know we don't have that much time, so I don't, I could talk about this for like an hour, so I'll, I'll stop there. I'm sure. I think it's worth talking about though. I mean, like we, we sell a physical product as well. And I mean, what we're talking about here is bridging the physical to the digital, right? And I think our consumers are expecting that. Um, from, from our side on the beverage alcohol front, we've, we've done a lot in the Web3 space with Johnny Walker. Uh, and we've actually sold physical bottles of Johnny Walker Ghost and Rare, which is a really unique luxury liquid that were paired with NFTs that extended that liquid in the bottle additional utility. Uh, so we, we airdropped NFTs along with the, the bottles, bottles that were sold. We gave them an experience, um, and so we were, we were able to get closer to consumers. So it's, it's a way for us to get closer to a modern luxury consumer that we're coveting and that we're looking to grow. Um, and so it, it makes total sense, and I think you know, the, the future is bright for, for brands like you that are, that are going after that space. Totally. Actually, on that note, Devin, um, are there any other activations that, you know, across Diageo's portfolio, I feel like you guys have so many different Web3 activations that you've done. Are there any other you feel are worth um, calling out just for some members of our audience who might be curious to get some inspiration? Yeah, and I think before I get into those examples, like, the strategic reasons for us to be in this space are, are, are a couple. The first is it, this space matters in culture for us, right? So in the beverage alcohol industry, if your brands are not in culture, they're not going to grow. They're not going to be relevant for consumers. And so the past year and a half, two years, this, this space has been a vibrant force in culture. So that's been important for us. The second thing that we've looked at Web3 for is, is really how we accelerate our approach to reaching that modern luxury consumer, just luxury in general. We do sell liquids that are over $150. Some of them are thousands, thousands of dollars a bottle. So thinking about how we use the technology to verify authenticity and ownership to reach those consumers. And the last thing I would say would be just looking at the space to think about how we innovate and create new business models, monetize our brand IP. You know, our, our brand IP, these are legacy brands, 200 plus years old. So how do we think about creating new levels of utility for the consumer? So we've done that in a few different ways. I've, I shared the Johnny Walker example, but we've also, in our marketing, on a brand like Crown Royal, 
we've, uh, we've created digital collectibles of the actual Crown IP, the digital Crown, as a way for consumers to give back. So Crown is a very purpose-driven brand. They do things in the, the community to support veterans, and they have this traditional brand mechanic where they invite consumers to pack a Crown Royal purple bag, and they give that purple bag back to the like service members in the veteran community. So we did this mechanic where if you minted a Crown digital collectible, the brand would pack a purple bag and send that to service members abroad. So it was just a way for us to incorporate Web3 into a traditional marketing mechanic and to amplify that in a new way. Awesome. So of the examples that you've all shared, um, you know, even you, G, in your intro mentioned you helped bring Adidas into the space. Um, then you created 90CC. Devin, um, at Crown Royal, you guys have made your own activations. I know that Diageo has also done different collaborations with influencers. You've partnered with different Web3 native communities like World of Women, pouring um, your beverages at their events. So it seems to me like there are two different ways that brands can think about entering the space. Perhaps they're not completely mutually exclusive, but for purposes of this discussion, let's just treat them differently. So one seems like it's like in-house coming up with your own Web3 activation. That would be something like 90CC, Crown Royal. The other seems like partnering with established Web3 communities. Um, this would be something like Adidas bringing you in and you guys partnering with like a world of women. How should our members of the audience think about what strategy might be right for them? Sorry. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I, I think when you think about it internally, you have to be thinking about how much are you willing to invest into this and also how much buy-in you have from the top level, right? I think a lot of the conversations that I have uh, with a lot of major brands start to, to hit a wall and they get frustrating because you know, it, you could have that team internally really leaning into the product, but if you don't get it at the highest level of, you know, the CEO on level down, right? Like, you're not gonna get that buy-in that needs to happen of understanding that this is a fundamental shift that's happening. And the beautiful part of it is that you can then, even from a brand perspective, right? And I think we've been focusing on it from a consumer perspective, is being able to then take those rails and take that data that you have and you're not, you're not necessarily tied to one system, right? Like, and I'll take something as simple as uh, a, re a membership rewards program of saying, okay, this membership rewards structure doesn't work for us anymore. We can now export this into a new structure that maybe works for us going forward. And so I think a, a lot of that conversation needs to happen internally. I think personally, a blend of the two probably works best because there are best practices in the industry that you know people that are down in the trenches every single day understand better than people that actually have to, to go and execute on it and, and sell it to their superiors. So I, I personally think that that combination of the two works best, uh, but I definitely, I definitely am more excited when I see buy-in happen from, from the top. Yeah, and I think definitely same with us. I think you know, we, we have a culture of innovation at Diageo, and so we have license from our CMO and, and our leadership to go out and experiment, to test and learn. Um, I think we started in this space really with partnerships, right? We, we do a lot of partnerships in culture. Our brands partner with celebrity talent a lot. Um, in the Web3 space, you mentioned World of Women, which is you know, a prominent collection. Uh, Johnny Walker partnered with them. Uh, Johnny Walker's purpose is to promote progress. It, that, you know, that happened to marry well with, with the World of Women kind of mission. Um, so we showed up with them at, you know, various event, events, you know, Art, Art Basel, and, you know, we poured our product, and, you know, we find ways to collaborate. And I think that that was an authentic way for Johnny Walker to get into this space. Um, I think authenticity is the most important thing as you're, as you're trying something new. And then once we had built that muscle and, and brought some of those learnings in-house, then we started to leverage the technology to build, right, and, and approach our marketing business goals to, to leverage the technology for how it could help us, right? And so there's a lot to say there, but I, I think, in short, partnership first, then brought a lot of the thinking in-house. I think that makes a lot of sense and it's super valuable for folks in our audience because I know we have a lot of CMOs, um, lots of folks from brands who are just kind of starting to think about their strategies, so um, really useful insights. 
I would love to chat a bit about the market state right now. So obviously a lot of the Web3 activations that we heard about as brands were entering the space were at a time when the market looked quite different than it did at this moment in time. Um, NFTs were super hot, everything was pumping. And I think that the motivations of a lot of brands entering the space back then as a result, just naturally of where the market was, Partially, some people were in it for a revenue opportunity. Partially, some folks were in it to stay culturally relevant, which we've identified is still a thing. Um, and some folks just purely wanted to beat their competitors to it as they saw other brands um, entering into the space. So I'd be curious to hear from you both, like given the state of the market right now, like what have you seen change that brands should really be taking into account as they think about their strategies as they're now entering the space? And where should brands be investing their time and their effort right now, um, particularly in terms of thinking of technology and strategy to have on their radar for the years to come? Um, I, I think the most important thing that I'm seeing right now is the, the innovation that's happening at the startup level in Web3 is, is definitely a positive level of innovation in the sense that it's reducing a lot of the confusion associated with Web3 um, and, and NFTs in general, tokens, to make it more consumer friendly for an audience that might not really understand the power of the technology or blockchain in general. So a lot of the conversations that we have with startups inside of Diageo and, and those that can help us build um, you know, the digital future of our brands, whatever that may be, uh, I think that the positive thing for me is they're, they're almost building for that web 2.5 consumer right, that is used to a traditional e-commerce experience and may not be fully uh, ready for, for Web3 or, or the nuances of blockchain technology. So for us, that's important, obviously, because we're a portfolio of scale brands, right? We, we sell millions of cases of our products on an annual basis, on a brand-by-brand -brand basis. So in order to reach the consumers that we need to reach to grow our share, by category, we need to be at scale. And so that's the, the positive thing for me in, in Web3 right now. Yeah, and I, I can say for interacting from within the community, one of the things that excites me the most is when a brand is coming into the space and not necessarily looking to just sell to the Web3 consumer and more so expand the category and say, let's introduce the technology to our current consumer. And I think we've seen examples of that probably over the last year, six, six to 12 months of different brands having different strategies and depending on those strategies and how much they're willing to open it up. Um, and really, you know, we're, we're coming on the back of Louis Vuitton announcing an NFT drop less than a week ago, right? And so um, it's gonna be very interesting to see how that, that operates. But one of the things that I really like is that they have the Connect wallet on the Louis Vuitton website. Right? And it's not just something that's, oh, we're gonna do this to uh, target this small specific market right now. It's more about saying, how do we bring the technology to our current consumer? Uh, because I do think that ultimately this technology, to, to what Devin was just saying, is something that will scale and will be used by brands over the next 10 to 20 years. This is not a question I prepped you guys for, but I'm just purely curious. Um, do you have any resources you could recommend that have been helpful in your advising brands coming into the space that, you know, if someone's just getting started, that perhaps they should look into? I mean, I'm, I'm a voracious media consumer, so I, I read all sorts of content. I mean, I, I find that Coindesk for an NFT now and some of those like, I guess, trade focused publications are really good to throw yourself into to understand uh, what's happening, you know, the, the shifts in the market and, and the, the newest stuff. And then generally I have my traditional like tech reading list as well. The other thing I would say is like, if, if you are a big brand like we are, like make sure you have the right agency partners working with you. Um, don't pretend you know everything. Make sure you're bringing smart people around you to, to help you along in your journey. Um, I think that's, you know, being self-aware is important. <laughs> uh, to, to add to the list that Devin said, uh, I would say probably Twitter is probably the, the best way to stay on top of everything in crypto and in terms of things that are happening as they're happening. Um, you know, I think NFT now is a great, they, they're, they cover stuff very quickly uh, and having, getting a good sense of the pulse of what's going on in the market. Totally, yeah, those are all great resources. 
Um, okay, as we're coming towards the end of our discussion, you know, I think there's each of these topics that we touched on could be a whole rabbit hole in and of itself, but could you please provide just like a piece of advice or recommendation for anyone in the audience um, who's looking to bring their organization into Web3? I mean, the first thing that I would say is just obviously be willing to test and learn, right? Um, as, as mentioned, you know, our, our, we have a culture of innovation where our leadership like forces us to do that, and we have to do that in order to stay relevant with consumers. And also, you know, if we if we test uh, and we fail, it's not going to sink our business. You know, thankfully we're in a we're in a fortunate position to be able to say that. But um, I, I think making sure that there is that section of the business that's willing to go out and to try new things in emerging technology. For me, that's you know, Web3, AI, enhanced reality, and, and some of those things that can help our, our brands reach consumers in new ways. Uh, so making, making sure that you have somebody like that inside of your organization, I think, is key. Um, otherwise, you know, the space of technology will move so quickly. Uh, you know, we've, we've seen two major inflection points in the last like, two years with both Web3 and now generative AI, uh, it will move so quickly that you will be behind before you know it. So, Yeah, and, and to add to, to those points, I think just trying and testing things out for yourself, um, just bringing up the point of AI. I remember when I first got into NFTs, a lot of it was just me taking some of my own money and just messing around with everything to understand stuff. It's like the numbers were so small, but understanding the concepts really early became really important. And I think we're seeing the same thing with AI uh, in terms of like the tool sets that are coming out there and just mess around with it. You know, pay, pay whatever the, the 10 or $20 monthly fees that it is for a lot of this stuff. Um, I ultimately think that NFTs and AI go hand in hand uh, because in a world where you can make anything on demand, you know, just by thinking about it, you're going to need some sort of authentication feature, which is really what Web3 really leans into. Uh, so I, I would say just going out there, the willingness to learn, the willingness to experiment, to learn from people younger than yourself, I, I think that that has been uh, something that has helped me a lot. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And actually, now that you guys both brought up AI, I wanted to double click into that for one second. Like, I think that, you know, people like to view things as totally separate. And I think that the narrative of AI and the excitement around that has kind of, in some cases, felt like it's almost taken over the excitement around Web3. But I think at the same time, we view a lot of organizations like thinking about emerging tech as one bucket, and it kind of combines both of those. So I'm curious, like either within your brand or with brands that you guys are seeing, like. Uh, how are you, are you seeing the excitement around Web3 like persisting and them seeing it as just one emerging tech bucket or what are your guys' kind of thoughts on that? One example for, for us where it kind of came together, and I mentioned this earlier, we sold 75 bottles of Johnny Walker Blue Ghost and Rare on a platform called Block Bar. Uh, and we sold it for above the traditional retail price because we bundled it with additional utility. One of the additional pieces of utility was an airdropped NFT that was designed by a female artist called Ivona Tao, who focuses on generative AI. So she, she uses AI to uh, build her artwork, and it's fantastic. And the artwork that um, was part of the NFT just so happened to like, work very nicely with the aesthetic look and feel of Johnny Walker Blue, Ghost and Rare. So, I agree with you. I think that they definitely go hand in hand. I mean, for, for us, um, leveraging blockchain for authenticity and ownership is, is still going to be very, very important for our, for our products. But I see it coming together. Yeah, and I, similarly, um, not exactly, but I've been messing around with, with AI stuff, uh, especially on the design side for the last few months. And uh, I'm a huge fan of Succession. And I'm not sure if anybody saw uh, those Balenciaga Harry Potter uh, video memes that came out a couple months ago. Uh, messing around with AI, I did a Succession 90cc version of that. Uh, and I ended up getting about 7 million views in, in one weekend. So I, just, I think that there's a lot of interconnectivity that's going to happen there, uh, not only on the creativity side, but then also on the authentication side. Totally. Yeah. And my take is like, 
this stuff is happening. It's already happening. So whether you think that your organization is going to utilize AI, Web3 or not, more likely than not within the coming years it is. So I think the name of the game, like these guys are saying, is just start getting educated. Start playing around, start messing around, start incorporating um, these things in your day to day. So this has been a jam-packed and very insightful discussion. I'm very proud. I think we got a lot in um, in a very short amount of time. So thank you so much, G, and thank you, Devin, for sharing your wisdom and insights with us. Any final quick things you want to say? Yeah, I mean, I would just say if you're going to get in, just remember to be authentic to your brand, right? Don't jump in just to jump in. Make sure you're doing it with the right people. Be authentic. Otherwise, you know, the list of brands that have fallen flat is quite long. So be authentic. Yeah, uh, echoing that. And you know, I'll be around all day if anybody has questions on, on this stuff and wants to dive in deeper. Yeah, these are literally two of the premier folks that you could be chatting about these topics with. So I would highly encourage chasing them down. Chase me down. Um, we help bring global brands into the space. Also happy to help. Thank you all so much for showing up for yourselves, for your brands, for the Web3 space. Um, this is a really exciting event that we have going on. And I think all of us are pushing at the edges together. So super excited to be here with you all. And make sure you pe also pick up your D2 membership NFT and have a productive and inspiring day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.